So I want to show you what I got going on and it's doing exactly what I wanted to do. So I may add an extra guy line to take some of the tension off right here. But then again, I might want to leave this here because if it rains, the water's going to run right through here. I have a slight angle going on right here on this one here. If you look here, you'll see how I have it sloped down, allowing the rain to run off this side here on the back. So, so I got guy lines holding my poles up. Got this, got some good tension going on here. This ain't going nowhere. I'm not expecting to get real windy, but just for reinforcement and a peace of mind, I may add an additional guy line. So I got plenty of room in here. This is exactly what I want. All right. And I have this set up to where this comes inside. So any rain that comes down here is going to run on the tarp. And um, I do believe I'm going to set my tent, like probably we're almost right here in the middle, slightly off the side here. We're going to get ready to get that set up here very soon. So, so yeah, let me show you guys real quick what it looks like right here in this open spot. There's an old trail that goes back there. Uh, the waterfall's over that way. And if you look, let's look over this way. The sky's looking kind of ugly over here. So we may still get that rain. Uh, who knows, it might bypass us, but I'm set up just in time. So I got the, my, my shelter set up. So at least now if it rains, when I go to set my tent up, I'll be good. So I'm pretty happy with the setup right now. Everything's pretty tight and secure. Again, I may add another additional guy line over here coming down here. So, and then uh, we'll finish getting everything together. Uh, as you see, I got a lot of my gear unpacked. Uh, that's my uh, cold storage food bag right there. All right. I got a lot of equipment, all my lights and everything in there. As you guys see, I got everything that still yet, uh, has yet to be set up. Got about six gallons of water. There's one of my tripods, the one where I had my camera on. So, so yeah, this is the area where I'm set up at right here. And uh, yeah, there's a, if you look around in some of the area, you'll see a lot of wildlife tracks in here. I mean, I've already seen some deer tracks, turkey tracks. And then just a little while ago when I was talking with you guys, I've seen what appears to be some interesting uh, impressions through here. I know the camera's not picking this up, but we may have bear roaming around here. There is bears in these woods. So bears, coyotes. All your typical critters here in North America, especially here on the east coast. So, so guys, I'm going to bring you back when I get some more time. Uh, when I finish moving along, getting the tent set up, and doing a couple last minute secures with the guy lines. So, all right, guys, I'm excited. So, it's great to be out here. I love it beautiful and uh we'll be back soon so as you see i got the tent set up it was actually really easy to set up because all you do is unfold it pop it up and then now you get the stakes out and just stretch it out a little bit secure it I do. I did lay a tarp down. Like I said, I had an extra tarp or two. I went ahead and put this down on the ground. Although I shouldn't have no worries here. But uh, and it is. Uh, it it has started to rain very lightly. It's sprinkling out right now. So that's all right.
So yeah, um, I got my SOG hatchet. This is a great hammer. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out to you as well is the stakes that I'm using. Um, let me uh, turn the camera around here. So these are steel. They're very lightweight, but they're steel. Uh, they do not bend. Uh, these are what came with the uh, the tarp, uh, the canopy for the uh, the hammock cam canopy that I'm actually using attached to the regular uh, pop-up canopy. Now these are new stakes that I got. They are heavy duty steel. Uh, they basically work their way through rock and they do not bend. Uh, these are amazing. Of course they're made in China, but they're excellent. They work great. Now as far as the Amflip tent, now most of these tent, uh, stakes, uh, I may not use these even though these are your little bit heavier duty uh, stakes. A lot of tents upgraded. They don't have the thin wire uh, stakes. Um, but these here, I'm gonna give it a try. If not, I got backups. I got the steel stakes, which are great. So we'll see what happens here. Um, but I am gonna attempt this, uh, although the ground is very rocky here. So, all right, so let's go ahead and finish getting this set up. I wanna organize my camp area and then uh, <clears throat> I'll be back. So one thing I do wanna point out, it was quite a success. I managed to use these stakes. The ones that came with a tent in this rocky ground without them bending up. So, yep, and then right there. So that's a success and it worked out great. Um, I didn't want to have to use the other ones unless I absolutely needed here. So, uh, so, a couple things we're going to do, uh, there's a couple of tie-offs here, like this here, which is awesome. Um, this goes out, got the zip-up door here. So, oh yeah, see, and that's one thing I like about this. I mean, if you wanted to, you could technically put a queen-size air mattress in here. It's, it says up to three adults, but two very comfortably. Uh... It's got a door on both sides, which you could use one for ventilation. This has its own built-in uh, ventilation up there uh, with the rain fly, as you see. And uh, the floor, it's a it's a little bit thick, uh, thick floor. So, and uh, like I said, I'm gonna finish putting my setup in here and get the rest of my camp set up. But I wanted to show you what I got going on here. Um, I'm already loving this tent. Um, I've checked the reviews on this and um, I just had to get it you know usually I sit, I camp in a much bigger tent but this is uh, the smallest tent I've ever owned and ever camped in so the Amflip again so far I'm impressed with Amflip but uh so let's finish getting set up guys and I'll be back shortly so as you see, I got my table set up, and uh, for those who have not seen this, if you haven't seen one of these, you're probably like, what the heck is this? It's a backpacking chair, and I'll show you. I'm going to put it together. Yeah, they look like a pain in the butt. If you're new to these, they are a pain in the butt at your first initial use. But as you see, you just put, put the pegs where they go, and I will tell you, First time putting this together. All right, there's the frame. First time putting together. These could be a little tight. Putting these on. Of course, the first part you want to do is get the the backrest on, and they slide right over. There's uh, there's pockets or little sleeves. You kind of want to put them on almost at the same time if you can. Like I said, the frame is a little tight at first, but it becomes flexible after a use or two. Then you got these little, there's little pockets right here. There's, they got that one on now. The last one's usually the hardest, which 
Sometimes it's good to put the chair down if you have to. All right. We are put together. So it might be a little spotty, uh, dirty looking because, of course, it had some rain last time I used it. These are very strong. They're comfortable. They have a high, these ones here have a high back. If you're looking at these ones, you want to look for ones that have a high back. There's a lot of different models and designs of these backpacking chairs, but they're perfect for, you know, just lounging, re relaxing in camp. Yeah, you low to the ground. These are great for fishing. Um, but uh, I highly recommend one. So uh, the link for this backpacking chair will be in the description as well. If I don't forget to do that. Uh, again, you could browse on Amazon and look for backpacking chairs, camping chairs, backpacking camping chairs or whatever. Again, they're good for fishing, doing this here. So, again, I highly recommend them. They're about anywhere from 50, 60, 70 bucks. You might, some of them depends on the brand, you might pay more. But this here was roughly around 60 bucks. It's worth it. Uh, the Amphlip uh, tent, you're looking between 60, 70 bucks great quality it, they're made for a lot of strong winds and storms rain uh even though i have the shelter the canopy i always do this no matter the conditions uh one it keeps it gives you a little bit of shade like the canopy that i have right here it's a dark green green's my color um again that helps with shade so uh the canopy i have i've had that for a long time you now um, it was a cheap 50 dollar um, canopy I've had for probably five years and uh, it serves a purpose it works great so I've, I've used it at events when I go to set up as a vendor and whatnot so but anyway I'm gonna uh, continue finishing setting everything up getting things organized and uh, I'll be back and uh, I'm gonna do once I get set up and get comfortable here um, I'm gonna do a little bit of exploring in this general area right here looking around uh work on getting some firewood together so yep so this is a, a new purchase of mine right here i wanted to try these out um let me back up and show you here so you would think it would be self-explanatory on how to put these together but uh, if you have any trouble putting these together just look at the picture on Amazon and they actually if you slide through they actually show you step by step so but uh, I am gonna try this tonight so um, this the fire shell itself where the firewood sits in you use firewood charcoal um, as you see there's a little bit of leftover blue tr uh, plastic lining on there which you want to make sure you remove like I did right here if not when you go to light a fire you're gonna have plastic melted all over there and it's going to stink real bad so but so yeah this is something i'm setting up right here um i have yet to get some firewood but it's uh just started raining out right now so yep we'll uh try it out here tonight see how it works out So yeah, this is a table. I know I showed it to you earlier, but look, it's very spacious. It's good for, a, you know, two or three, four people. It's got plenty of rooms, got a bottom storage. And once you set it up, it's very firm. And uh, I love this thing. It's probably one of the best camping pieces of equipment that I've got. So, all right, guys. So yeah, one of the first things I got put in the tent here is my self-inflating uh, air pad so I got my uh, sleeping bag got my camping pillow and a nice new lightweight very warm backpacking blanket so it's gonna get down to the 30s but I'll be uh, pretty warm and cozy in here tonight so yeah. so over here this is my new lightweight blanket Okay, we're gonna pull it out here and it's it's thin. You're gonna see, oh man, that's thin. That ain't gonna keep you warm. These are made to keep you warm. They're made for this 
they're lightweight compact and uh yeah i'll share this on amazon or well, from amazon in the description so stay tuned yeah so tonight i will be using this i have several lights uh battery operated and rechargeable lanterns that work right and last a while uh, but this right here, this was a gift from Julie. This was one of my birthday gifts. And uh, I got the oil for it. And I'm looking forward to using these. I know a lot of people use these. Um, I'm already loving it and haven't used it yet. So I need to get at least another one of these. But, uh, yep, it's an oil lamp. And I'll be looking forward to using this. Um, never used one before, so... I'm excited. So we're going to have plenty of light around here. That's not going to be an issue. So yeah, there's my tripod with the umbrella because it's raining. It's been raining very light on and off, which is not an issue. So um, again, I want to show you guys one more thing here as far as my tarp. Uh, this is my hammock tarp that I have set up. And if you see, the, I have, I'm going to keep an eye on this. If it gets heavier, I see it developing a pool right here, but it should have runoff over here. Um, if push comes to shove, I will find another pole or make elevate the center here so it runs off of there. But um, so far, it's looking like it's doing real well. I'm staying dry under here. So, but uh, my camp is slowly coming together. And uh, I pretty much got the inside of this all set up here. So, yeah, we're going to be nice and cozy tonight. Now, the air pad it already has like a self built in pillow for the head part but um i do have a camping pillow which i'm going to pull out here shortly get that in here so but yeah you see how i have all this space i'll keep some stuff inside here with me tonight so yep but yeah and i got some other gear i can't wait to share with you guys i'm going to experiment with some of it uh right now while it's raining i wanted to get some drone footage of the area but at the moment i don't see that happening so but I, I do have my drone with me. The Holy Stone drone. Now I will tell you, this is an okay drone. It's not a bad drone for a budget. Um, there's one I have in my save for later list on Amazon, um, which um, I may end up getting when the time is right. So, but yep. You can probably hear the rain. Like I said, it's very light right now. All right, so we'll be back here, guys, after a while. So here's my pillow right here. Truckology. Uh, this is the brand, Truckology. This is about the size of a soda can. It fits right in your hand. That's how compact this is. Again, yes, it's made in China. Designed in Portland, Oregon, but made in China. Surprise, right? <laughs> anyway, it's uh, the Airluft Pillow 2.0 comfort latch all right well let's get this thing open and aired up and set inside the tent but i just want to show you how compact they come this is uh the convenience of backpacking and another thing too uh these are great to have um which is uh if you you probably already know what it is for those who use them it's actually a camping chair, a portable camping chair, which I may use this as in addition to another table out here. They just use the small top. They're very easy to open and close. So, all right. So, again, I got more stuff to get out, get set up, and then I want to organize some of this here because I have stuff tossed and turned everywhere. So, so here's a pillow right here. I'm going to tell you what it took. No more than 10 seconds to blow this little thing up. Yeah. Again, Trekology. Yep. You can get them in different colors, but uh, as you guys see, green is my color. Just like the, the Amflip tent, it's actually a dark olive color green. With that blaze orange trim. I love that. 
So, all right, let's get this here inside the tent. Oh, we'll toss it up there for now. We'll fix it later. So, yeah, right now with this little bit of overhang right here, this is perfect because the rain's picked up a little heavier. And uh, even right here, I'm still staying dry, which is nice. But uh, again, I have to keep an eye on this, make sure I don't build up. So, but that's an easy fix if we need to fix it. So, so yeah, in this area here, there's a lot of dead stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna work on a couple of pieces over here. There's a lot of good dead stuff here. It's very dry season out. Even though it's raining, I need to get some firewood. And uh, we're gonna put this uh, new battery operated mini chainsaw to use. Now you can, it says it can cut up to six to eight inches round logs. So, so uh, I'm just gonna cut up a few small pieces and uh, see what we got. Let's see what we get going here. So, uh, first time using it, so you guys are watching it while it's working. And uh, I don't know, let's go ahead and get this started. I'm excited. By the way, I need to point something out. It's an observation. I'm always looking. There's some soft areas here. I'm seeing some decent impressions here. Um, when I see decent impressions, I'm talking about humanoid looking tracks. Now, some of these could actually be bear tracks because the warm weather has been coming in and we're, uh, you know, bears are moving around more. They're starting to fill their bellies back up. So. That's another thing we have to watch out for. As I mentioned earlier, there's bears out here, so we need to watch the bears. So, um, but I'm gonna be watching and you know, keep my eyes open. If I see anything that really stands out, you know, you guys know me. For those who've been following my YouTube video for over the years, you guys know I point everything out if I find something. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's go get this. Uh, uh, let's get some wood cut up here. Let's get a little closer here. See what we got going on. Some of the, yeah, see, like a lot of this is rot. This will still work. This here is, some of it's breaking up. But this is going to be great firewood because it's dry, rotted. Um, so let's go ahead and cut a couple pieces here and see what we got. Oh my goodness, this thing is amazing. This cuts through this like butter. Approximately about five to six inches around right here, and it's cutting through this real good. Now they say the batteries run up to 30 minutes on a, you know, off of a full charge or a whole uh, use. I got two batteries, so I think we're gonna be all right. over here I'm working around so don't mind me if I fall it's because it's my own fault I'm not watching these thorns well um I got some more cutting to do, but let me gather these together, and uh, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys back at camp. So, hey, it's called tie talk. This thing here. This is an awesome little saw. Now you can get. I will say this: you can get much uh, better brands. So they got name brands like Dewalt, and so much more. You're gonna pay a lot more money. I'm gonna tell you, this here was around 50 bucks. 
that's a $50 for this mini battery operated chainsaw. And I'm loving it, but I have yet to really put it to the use. It's a little bit harder wood. So we'll see what happens, guys. We'll be back. So yeah, I've been watching the rain build up on this tarp. So one of the things I had to do, I cut down another stick and I have an extra funnel. I used the funnel to put the tip of the stick in uh, while it's resting in my cup holder on the table so it does not pierce my cup holder. Um, and I got the top cut pretty flush and I am still gonna put something up there. So what I'm looking at here, I'm gonna take a guy line and just put a little bit more tension over here to allow more runoff over here because it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually building up right here. So if I put tension on the other end, that's gonna help a little bit. I may have to put, looks like I might have to do two guy lines on this side. I'm not so much worried about that side because it's sloping straight down, the water run, is running straight off. So. so that's what you got to work with when you got rain. I mean, if it wasn't raining, I wouldn't care. So, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm well protected and everything out of here. Everything's uh, real good. I'm very content with the way this is set up, but yeah, this is the way it goes. You gotta make adjustments if it's raining out. So, I knew it was gonna be raining today, so. All right. Let me get a couple stakes here. Even though it's cloudy and rainy out, it looks like the sun's trying to find its way out here. Let me get my hammer, well, axe. Actually, wow, I think that one guy line might have done the trick. I'm impressed with that. So everything should run down here and... Well... I didn't think it was going to happen, but apparently I got rain building up um, just slightly on the other side. I may have to add a, another guy line there or make an adjustment to the pole there. I don't want too much weight on that uh, tarp there. So, uh, as far as the rain, the rain's supposed to stop this uh, this evening. In the next couple days, it's supposed to be good out here. But, uh, all right, so yeah, let me go make some adjustments and uh, get this worked out. All right, so I made a few adjustments, and so you can tell it probably looks a little different. I'm going to take you around the back side show you what I did. Just walk around my vehicle, come over here. Now, some of you guys are probably saying, yeah, that's too many guy lines. Yeah, it might be overkill, but it works. It works. Everything works out perfect here. Everything's well secure. So if you remember previously, this here was attached up here. Okay. 
and it was working out great. But everything's still keeping everything under here dry. Keeps the water from running off there. Keeps uh, the tent no longer gets wet. It might get a little wet down there, you know, on the backside, depending on how the rain comes down, if there's any wind. But uh, this works out great right here. So, and if anyone's wondering as well, the pole that, uh, the tree that I cut there, yes, I'm using cardboard so it does not pierce. Even though it's cut flat, uh, this here will prevent it from piercing this tarp and also slipping. So, and this is what I did right there. So it's not piercing the netting of the cup holder. So, yeah, if you wonder why there's sawdust up here, it's because I was, I had a couple small logs I was running across here cutting up. Um... I'm gonna get some more wood here. This is just, this will be good for tonight. I also have charcoals with me, which I plan on cooking over top of the charcoals because I got hot dogs, I got steaks, um, and I got some good stuff that I'm gonna be eating later. I think tonight we're gonna have a steak and some salad. Um, I even have a can of brown beans. So, and another thing, if you guys are wondering, okay, this is primitive camping. Where do I use the bathroom? Well, a lot of people dig a hole or find a tree or... I do have a portable potty. And uh, I've been wanting to get one for a long time. And here it is. The Ann Katy Portable Toilet. Yep, Amazon. Perhaps I'll set that up just to show you what it looks like. Or you could, better yet, you're better off just going to Amazon and looking it up. You can get different designs. You can get all uh, plain black or they, some of them have like a forest design on them. So, yeah. So, that's one of the items I have out here. Um, some of the items I probably showed you a few things a little too quick. But we're going to go over a few other things later. But um, I'm proud to show you guys my gear I've been itching to use. Uh, the Odlin. Odlin. So, two-in-one LED camp light. Um, I do have batteries for this. It's a light and a fan, but we're gonna we are gonna use it inside the tent. I have enough lights for the outside, so so there's a couple more lanterns there. I got one laying there. Uh, that there is a very bright light, and I got other ones that you don't see at the moment. So um, they're actually inside my hundred liter backpack. So yep. So we're doing pretty good here, guys. Um, we're basically set up, you know, so. Oh, and the rain stopped. And look, I see blue sky, guys. There's some blue sky out there. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> nice. Maybe the rain stopped for the day. I don't know. It was supposed to stop more in the evening. But so anyway, um, we'll be back. So it's a little early. I usually don't like setting up a fire too early. Um, I just want to get the feel of this new little uh, portable campfire stove. And uh, now the wood I got in there, it is a little damp, but uh, we're going to throw some uh, fire starter shredding on there and uh, see what we got. So we got a fire established here. Now, like I said, this is a little damp. Um, see what happens here. I'm gonna let these other pieces sit off the side here. I know I have some a little bit drier pieces here. Uh, yeah.
Now, if this wasn't to work out, I do have some backup. Um, I brought some lighter fluid, but that's mainly for the charcoal. Um, like I said, it was raining out on and off. And uh, so even though this is damp, some of this is already starting to pick up. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. I got a couple dry pieces here. I'll be adding to it very shortly. I'm gonna tell you, you can never have enough lighters. I, got, I love this little torch lighter. I have other lighters in there with the long stems. Those are excellent to use for camping. Yep. I have like two or three other uh, lighters that I know of. See, these are dry inside. These are going to be good. I'm going to cut that over right there. Let us do it. Let it do its thing. Oh my, the sun's coming out a lot more now. This is awesome. I'm like really enjoying this right now. I got a lot of blue sky over here. It's still a little gray over there. It looks like everything that was here is going that way. I'm really hoping that was the end of the rain. Let things dry up a little bit because uh, I mean, I want to do some exploring. I don't know how much I'll do today. Um, I'm gonna stay close to camp. I mean you guys saw this whole space. I'm in right now, so uh. Again, I got to point this out the tie talk uh, mini chainsaw I'm very impressed this here did pretty well. I cut through some drier hardwood over here went through it like butter I'm very impressed I mean, I'm not done using it. I got some more to do. As you can see, it's, it, it doesn't weigh that much. It works great. We're going to let this fire continue to do its uh, job. Um, I'm going to work, uh, go around here, work on gathering some more uh, firewood for later. Uh, although tonight I think I'm going to use mainly charcoal. I got plenty of charcoal to use for a couple nights. Because uh, tonight I think we're going to do the steak. And, uh, and then go from there. I got to come out of this raincoat. It's actually keeping, it's making me real warm. Well, plus I got a small fire going on right here. Which is starting to work really well. You can't see the flame too well but I can see it real good right here. It's catching on well, so. Uh, so guys, we'll be back. So, as you see, there's all kinds of dead stuff around here. Um, right now, there's a lot of soft areas back here where I'm looking for tracks. And I do believe I've seen a nice looking bear track impression. But right there, there's my camp set up right there. And for those who don't know, 
I'm in Pennsylvania. And that's all I'm saying. Pennsylvania. The wilds of Pennsylvania. And what do we have here? Hold on. Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute here. Look at this. There's a heel. Looks like there's... This looks like an old track. Either... Yeah, these look like where toes used to be right up here. The camera's probably not doing no justice, but I'm showing you the best I can. This is a right foot going in that direction. And that's why I'm always looking, because you just don't know, guys. So... Yeah, I'm going to cut some of this stuff up and take it back to camp. Some of this looks pretty dry. Considering we had a little bit of rain here shortly, not long ago. But uh, anyway, if I see anything else, I'll bring you guys back. Almost 12.30, lunchtime. Explains why I'm feeling hungry right now. Uh, got uh, the fire slowly going here. And uh, you probably hear this. Got these helicopters flying by. This is just an observation, but this is the third helicopter I've seen. Unless it's the same one, just going back and forth. I had one come from this direction back here, shooting over that way. I had one going from over there, going that way. Now this one here is coming from over that direction, headed that way. Again, it's just an observation. So if you hear me speaking real loud, it's because I can't hear myself talking to you over the loud helicopter. Anyway, besides that, I mean, yeah, I hear the birds chirping, uh, occasional woodpeckers. Right now, I've got a little bit of breeze going on. And if you walk over that way, or even even from here, if you if you just sit still and listen. You can hear the stream and the waterfall flowing real well. There is a waterfall, which I'm going to show you guys probably tomorrow. Um, the waterfall is beautiful, by the way. So, But anyway, I'm going to work on uh, heating up some water. I'll probably have some noodles. I don't want to overdo it right now. And look, here's that helicopter. I think it's the same helicopter. This one here is a dark one. There was a silver one. And there's a dark one. I don't know if they're looking for somebody or something or what the deal is, but... Makes you wonder, what are they doing? All right, now he's circling around. He's looping around. He's going back. He's circling around. What in the world is he doing? Watch this. I'm going to turn the camera around. Yeah, he's circling around. I don't know what the issue is, I mean, what the deal is with this, but. I don't know if they're test flying or what they're, what, what they're doing. It just makes you really wonder though. I mean, for people like me and you, or it just, if we don't know any better, it, it almost seems suspicious. But anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. But uh, anyway, I'm going to make some water. I'm hungry uh, for my noodles. So I'll be back later, guys. first battery get a lot of cotton with the first battery yeah I cut up quite a bit and this is hardwood too so it's taking up more juice uh, 
Yeah, I've been cutting up some pretty solid wood, but I'm impressed. First battery. Let's go get the second one. All right, new battery. Here we go. Oh yeah, you can hear the difference right there. Between what I got over there and these few pieces here, this should be all right. As long as we don't rain, as long as it doesn't rain no more, this is going to be a good piece to cut up later. Yeah, so I'm just checking right now. It's not getting hot up here. This is doing real well with the flame doing as well as it is. I don't feel no heat up here. That's good. I don't want the tarp to burn up. So guys, I'm gonna bring you back a little later. Uh, I'm gonna focus and on this fire and uh, I'm gonna charge the phone up for a little bit uh, so we can record some more later. But, um, I need to get me something to eat, I am starving. So um, again, I'll bring you back later and uh, just stay tuned. We'll do a little uh, chat. There's a few things I do wanna go over because uh, people, it actually sent me some messages or responded to a post of mine on Facebook. Um, and there's a few topics they want me to discuss, which I'll be more than glad to do so. So, but, uh, yeah. You know, I have so many different knives and I love them all. And, uh, my newest one I have, which I showed you guys before, is my new Mossy Oak Bowie knife. And I love that thing. It's sharp strong very adorable um not to mention cheap <laughs> surprisingly yes it's a cheap knife but the quality is really good so i think for this camp out and uh exploration i'm using another cheap knife that's been with me for a long time and it's been a great knife um bought this through walmart it's a winchester and not to mention the case that was made for me. ECBRO with Bigfoot on it. Yep. Uh, the gentleman who made this for me, uh, he is no longer on Facebook. Uh, Walter. Uh, he was a very talented man. Uh, great quality. Leather. Well put together. Spe uh, specifically designed for this knife. So, but uh, anyway, I'm going to do a little exploring around here right now and uh, get out there and see what's in this general area. And I'm going to be putting some cameras out. So, so we'll see. I'll be back later. Well, I'm all set up. I got three cameras. Um, we'll see if I can find some places to put a place them. I want to put some directly back this way. Um, one, I've seen a lot of wildlife sign back there. Possibly some big bear around here. Uh, I might leave one overlooking the camp just to see if anything comes around after hours when I'm asleep. Um, I'm not sure yet. But, uh, I don't know. Let's go. Let's go see what we can find. Uh, we're going to do a little exploring. I won't. We won't be too long. Uh, we're going to do more tomorrow, but I want to stay close to camp today, being that it's the first time out here. Um, still got a lot of my stuff setting out, you know, so one reason why I want to stay close to camp. But we're going to head back there. Let's go back there and see what we can find. And, uh, you know, with the rain and everything, uh, the ground soft, we have a, it's a good opportunity to look for tracks, especially in the soft soil, anything that's exposed. 
um, or anything odd that stands out, which is what we like to explore for, you know, strange oddities in the forest as we venture into the Pennsylvania wilds. So come on, let's go. So yeah, I took the camera off the tripod. It's getting a lot thicker uh, through here and to carry the tripod along with the, the camera, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So uh, I'm gonna be holding the camera um, as we venture through here. So Let's see what's up here. It's uh, pretty interesting looking up here. So we'll carry on. There's a, uh, this is a, Heavily used game trail, you can see a pattern through here, and you can see in different areas where it splits off through here, um, where they go quite often. Some heavily common used game trails all through here. I mean, there's some big deer in here, a lot of big bucks. So, who knows, we might get fortunate to see some wildlife through here. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back here shortly. See, I was telling you how thick it was getting through here. This is what I'm talking about. This here is right in front of me where I'm headed, but. One thing, it's an observation of mine. Throughout different areas here, you can see where some of these Mount Laurel and other bushes and trees, they've actually been smashed down. Something very large has been moving their way, uh, working their way through here. Uh, you know, you got little things like that there, broken twigs and thorns. Now I see it's a, it's thick right here, but it looks like I see a clearing up ahead. So I'm taking you with me, bear with me, because it's very thick in here. And it's not that easy to maneuver through until I get over here. Yeah, you see it opens up a little bit here. I've never been back through here before. I see it's interesting looking back here that's for sure it drops down over here right here the trail it's a well used trail it goes right through here a very heavily used game trail yeah see right here right here the main one runs this way that's where we kind of want to stay. I don't know what might be... Oh, what is that? Is that a big rock wall or a stone foundation? Wait a minute. What the heck? Holy crap. What am I seeing over here? Is there a cave over here? There are some massive stones over here. There's a big rock wall over here. Oh, my gosh. I don't even... What am I looking at over here? All right. We're going to carefully maneuver our way through here okay I thought it looked like a cave from back there it was dark looking but it's just part of the rocks see over here from back over there it looked like a cave but I see something else that looks interesting if we can work our way through these thorns take a close look I want to get a good look here at this rock wall all right, it looks like I'm not going to be able to maneuver around this way. All right. It looks like something might have laid or bed down there before. 
All right, I'm caught up on all these thorns here, so bear with me. I'm holding the camera and trying to maneuver through all this at the same time. So you can't see it right here. There's a lot of big heavy rocks right here. We don't know if there's a cave or dens back here. It's real thick right here. But you got this right here. All this has been pushed down. Yeah. Are you seeing how thick it is in here? My arm's getting scraped up, cut up. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna stop recording here for just a little bit so I can work my way through here and get a better look. I'll bring you back here in a little while. So, all right, stay tuned. See, I'm seeing a lot of this. This has been pushed over. And these trees don't bend that easily, but they've been bent and pushed over. Not recently, but they've been broke for quite some time and bent over. And they healed. You can see some of the breaks of where they healed up. But I've been seeing this throughout this general area. Now, of course, a lot of people, if you're a Bigfooter, oh, Bigfoot did it. No, there's bears in here. I've already seen some other signs that I could contribute and relate to bears. And that's what I'm leaning on, leaning towards is bear activity. All right. I see a lot of deer sign in here. There's a lot of deer sign, but some, some of the game trails in here, some of them are wider than the others. One, yeah, you got big, big deer. But there's also a big bear through here. Now, here's something to be observant of. Some fairly large impressions in here. You got deer impressions, deer tracks, and there's also large impressions through here. So where I'm at right now, I basically did a big loop. Because where I was headed, I wanted to keep going, but it was very, very thick. I am going to bring the drone out towards this way. I want to get a good aerial view of this area. I want to let the drone pick up on what I can't get to. So we'll do that either a little later. Let's see, look at this. Game trail split everywhere around here. So, you know, if I put my cameras up, I mean, any area out here would probably be good. But, uh... Oh, wait a minute. See, I like when I see rocks, big giant stones or rocks. I'm sometimes drawn to them because you don't know if you might come across a cave or a den. So, yeah, it's thick through here. A lot of mountain laurel. Trying to find the best way to maneuver myself through here without getting stuck. But we're going to work our way through this way. I don't know if you can see there's some stones right through here. And these big stones go all the way around. Maybe another stone wall. I don't know. But we're going to go check this area out. Stay tuned. So right here. I'm not going to put my head down in there. I'm not going to try to crawl in there either. But I am going to make an observation. It goes in quite some ways. From what I can see. I don't know if the camera's doing any justice. But I don't have the light in, the, light in here to show you. So one of two things. Coyote den or bears could be in there too. Bears will fit in that. You'd be surprised. Bears fit in the smallest holes. But we might have a coyote den here. Maybe a bear, but we're not going to go in there to find out. So you can see it's, it's really thick through here. A lot of briars through here. I'm, again, I'm getting sliced up. But we're going to work our way back up out of here. Unless I see something that I'm drawn to again. But I want to share this with you. We got a small den or cave here. So. Yeah, there's an, the other big stone there. So this whole area is like this. It's very hard to maneuver through here. So you see why I did not bring the tripod. So. All right. We're going to carry on. All right. So I just came up through all here. And I'm standing on a stone right now. All this thick mountain laurel. All right. 
Got a dogwood tree right over there. But it's getting a little clearer. Even though it's thick through here, this will be a lot easier to maneuver through. But uh, yeah, there's bedding spots around here. I see where deer bed down at. Deer pass right through here. Yeah. So, funny thing is, deer could be bedded down in here right now. Probably end up scaring the crap out of me. We got some kind of, we got a couple large and probably one here, one over here. See, you got this. Your camera's probably not doing no justice. But we got bear sign here. Oh. Yeah, this is a workout maneuvering through this stuff. But yeah, we're going to continue working our way back up through here. So I'll bring you back here in a little bit. So yeah, there's this old logging trail here. Going up this way here. Actually, it's leading back to where my camp is. So I put one camera up right here on this tree here. Because I just came out from over here. So, hopefully we'll get something good on there. All right, let's carry on. So, again, this is one area I love to look in. So, I want to show you guys something here. And a lot of this is not fresh, but uh, one thing that stands out right here, there's some toes. There's some deer impressions through here. Don't get too excited. I'm showing you this, but that's not Bigfoot. That's bear. It's part of the a rear hind foot of a bear. The front paw right there. They're working their way this way. So, even though we got all this down debris right here, the bears, they come right through here. All the wildlife you see some other big impressions. Not at all your animal wildlife tracks are going to be clear and definitive you just got to know what you're looking for so so i'm looking very carefully the bears work these areas these areas that hold water because you get a lot of uh tadpoles and stuff like that they feed on that it's part of their uh food source So yeah, this splits back to the other trail where I have to heck go up to get the tripod. But uh, I don't, don't ask me why, but, but stumps that have moss growing over them, it's pretty cool. I like that stuff. Yeah, see, I see deer tracks right through here. Yep. jump off here for now let's go get that camera uh excuse me tripod i'm holding the camera <laughs> all right so this is the way i got to go back to get the tripod camps that way camera number two so i got one back this way i got this one right here now let's go get the tripod and again the third camera, I'm thinking about putting it closer to camp. Just to see, for the heck of it, what might turn up. Then again, I kind of want to put it back here. Because maybe the wildlife may send some over here and they don't want to get that close. So maybe it might be a good idea to keep one further out. So let's go get that tripod and we'll figure things out here soon. Alright, so I'm here with the tripod. Keep in mind there's an open area there there's a to and from game trail right here um and i put camera number three right here i think this is going to be a great spot if the wildlife are active this time of year or, or over the next couple days we should be able to capture so, something without an issue so so we got this one one at the fork of the two trails and then the one so far down on the other trail but, uh, yep. So, yeah, let's get back to camp and, uh, get settled, get relaxed, organize a little bit, and enjoy ourselves.
Well, we're back here at camp and uh, everything looks pretty good. Nothing's blown over because it's pretty windy out right now. Uh, so I think it's time to do a little organizing. And uh, I might go ahead and get the drone out. If the wind, I don't know. It might be too windy for the drone. I mean, the rain's off right now, but I would like to get some good aerial photo footage of this uh, this whole area. So, so now that I got cameras out there, if I'm gonna be out here for the next couple days, I want to leave those areas alone. Uh, there's other areas which I'm gonna venture out this way, and at some point, I do want to show you guys the waterfall. So I think it's, I mean, I can hear it running from here. It sounds like it's flowing really well right now. So, but yeah, let's uh, let's relax, have a drink. So, I'll bring you guys back here shortly. So, so I want to show you the results of walking through a lot of that thick debris. And a lot of people don't do this, but I do because sometimes when you go through a lot of the thick debris and where the forest gets really thick. Sometimes that's where the good stuff comes about. You find interesting things that you don't normally find out in the opening. Um, so yeah, I take a chance at it. And I know the consequences of doing so, and I'm going to share that with you. One is, you get sliced up like I was telling you what was happening earlier. And here are the results. <laughs> this is the results of going through a lot of the thick briars and the thorns. So... You know, comes with the territory. I um, mean, I knew this was going to happen when I started working my way through there. So, um, one of the things I try to do is I try my best to push aside, step on them. Uh, like, I have my knife, you know, I use my knife to slide it out of the way. Sometimes I even cut stuff out of the way. Um, I do have a machete, which I didn't bring it out there with me, which probably would have come in handy, but it is what it is. So, but yeah, I just want to show you, this is what happens when you go through a lot of the thick briars and the trees and everything's wrapped around everything. So, but um, it is what it is. So, so yeah, this wind stays calmed down. I may pull the drone out. Like I said, I wanted to get some drone footage of the area. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, I just got back from another short little hike. I just walked down the entrance to where I pulled in it. And I noticed there was a clearing off the side of the woods there, turned into a, what was actually a trail. And then it actually came up on the back side of camp over this way. So as I'm working my way up there, I come across a deer kill. You know, right in the middle of the trail. Yeah, you know, most of the remains are there, except the skull was missing. Uh, the lower, the jaw bones were gone. I'm no, excuse me, the jaw bones were there. The spine and part of the hip, you know. I said, oh, this is interesting. Probably coyotes or something, you know. So I continue walking beyond that. And I'm going up the trail and I look over to my left and on a stump, sitting directly on an old cut stump, was this skull. Yep, this buck skull. Which was a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pointer. He's got some uh, fur left on the skull. Yeah, some of the antlers, are like right here, you can see where they started to get ate up by critters. But yeah, found this guy sitting on a stump. So, what was interesting was what got even more interesting. As soon as I turn around to head back, because it was starting to rain again. I turn around and look up right up on a tree looking down at me was a spy point trail camera. Yep, so somebody was getting the instant shot of me and I even posed for them showing them the skull. Um, the spy point trail camera belongs to Mr. Andy Walker. Now uh, the name was written on the camera. So yeah, Andy Walker, it's me who's on your camera. I don't know if you placed this uh, skull on that stump, but I just thought it was interesting. I like finding antlers and skulls and finding bones. I, I like to collect bones sometimes. So yeah, this was interesting. So I don't know if you place it there or not, but it's still interesting. 
Andy Walker of Pennsylvania. There you go. So, yep. Starting to rain. I'm going to get back up underneath the shelter. Wash my hands after I place this down somewhere. So, yep. All right. We'll be back later. So, anyway... Before I left out to go walking around, I had my EMF reader just scanning the area to see if I had any readings, which I did not. Um, yeah, before I went off and did that and found the skull and the bones, I was working on putting new batteries in this, and I don't have enough. I was able to put two new batteries in my new light, my fan light, another Old Lynn product. So I have a couple of old land products here. Um, anyway, let me put the cap back on this if I can remember what I did with it. I have another bag that has batteries in it. I'm currently trying to locate that. So those batteries that were in this were, weren't no good anyway. So um I'm glad I had that bar of soap in the back of the vehicle there because I washed my hands after touching that skull. A lot of germs and bacteria on those things. Alright, I'll put that there because I need to put that away. Um, I got triple A's and some double A's. I don't think I need them for anything right now. So if it looks like a mess, yeah, because I got stuff I just put up. I got my power bank this thing is amazing you could charge up to two devices on this up to four hours i have my smaller one too for a backup but with my vehicle here i can plug things directly up into my vehicle which is great but you can never go wrong with a power bank solar power bank you could charge these up um you can plug them up and charge them and if you leave them out in the sun they take a long time but they do charge up in the sunlight so, all right, put those there for now. Yes, this is my Winchester, and it needs to be cleaned off. It's still very sharp. Yeah. Uh, what time we got? All right, it's about 5.30. Probably another hour. Yeah, probably about another hour or so, I'll probably start cooking my main dinner. <clears throat> I had me another pack of noodles here and a hot dog, a couple hot dogs, about a half hour, 45 minutes ago, just to hold me over. So, a lot of this hiking and this exercise I'm getting is uh, building up an appetite in me. So, so if uh, you're wondering, uh, my cook stove, there's all kinds of models you can get on Amazon. This I bought at Walmart for 20 bucks. You know, I thought I'd give it a try and it's Ozark trail and it's, it's awesome. Canister fits right in here. It's a regular canister that fits in here and there's only one way to ho hook it up safely, which is um, the way these are designed. You can't go wrong. Uh, it heats my water up perfectly. Um, this is, my main source of heating water up, but I'm going to be using the cook stove, I mean the, the fireplace, to do my main cooking. Uh, just mainly to cook my steak. I mean, I can cook hot dogs on there too if I want to. Um, I got some uh, pasta salad that I made the other night to take out here with me. So I'll be having that with my steak. Um, steak, mushrooms. I even have some shrimp. <laughs> yes, I got shrimp I'll be eating out here. It's already pre-cooked shrimp you know it's mainly i took i bought a thing of shrimp cocktail um but i'm gonna be using them to have with my shrimp later looking forward to that oh and yes i'm looking forward to breakfast i got bacon and uh, i got a new waffle uh iron griddle um you just put it over the fire and heat let it heat um looking forward to trying that out so yeah waffle and waffles and bacon in the morning that's what i'm gonna be cooking up tomorrow
waffles and bacon. I got some thick cut bacon too. So I'll probably only have a couple strips of bacon tomorrow and then maybe pig out the next couple of days with considering the portions I have. So but so yeah. Like I said, in about another half hour or so, I'll start getting the fire going. I got some good wood. Uh, I got I got some real good wood. Yeah, if I need when I need more for tomorrow, I got more to cut up tomorrow. So, yep. And it is starting to cool off. I got my hoodie out, and then if it gets too cold, I got my real good coat. I got long johns, long sleeve shirts. So, I mean, I'm well prepared for the cold temperatures. It's not going to be that cold, really. I mean, 30 degrees is cold, like freezing to a lot of people. I've camped out in a lot colder weather than that, especially during the fall hunting seasons out here. Yep. So, I want to talk a while, real quick while I'm thinking about it, while it came in my head. My sleeping setup inside the tent. I have the air pad that you know you blow it up. You it's you just step on it and blows up, or you could just put you could put a little um, air pump to it, electric air pump. Um, but you know they work and they inflate just as quick. You know if you do it by foot, there's a foot pad on it. And um, anyway, I've only used that in a hammock. Uh, I've hammock tent a couple times with Julie, and um, it worked out okay in there. This is going to be a little different. This is directly flat on the ground. Um, I, I mean, it should be fine. I mean, I have a couple layers in there. I have my sleeping bag and my light, my lightweight blanket. Got a pillow in there. Uh, again, the air pad has an elevation for the headrest. But uh, I actually got an additional pillow because I can't sleep flat. I cannot sleep flat. I got to have elevation to my head. So... But, uh, see, right now the rain stopped again, but it's getting a little windy. I'm hoping the next couple of days the wind ain't bad. I really hope we're not going to have a lot of wind. I know tomorrow is only supposed to get up in the 50s tomorrow for Saturday, and uh, which is fine. Comfortable weather. Yeah, the one thing when camping out, um, I, I organize, for those who don't know me, I organize group camp outs. I take people out. Um, I do it in Virginia every year. And this year, for the first time, I have a group camp out being held in May. Um, let me back up a little bit for those who, again, who don't know. Uh, me and my soon-to-be wife, Julie. We are hosting an event up here in Pennsylvania. Um, it's the Pennsylvania Myths and Legends Festival. Happening May 25th. Uh, we're expecting a great turnout. We really are. We're expecting one heck of a turnout. And I encourage you, if you're in the area, um, even if you're not a fan of cryptids or Bigfoot or any folklore legends, um, it's a fun thing to do. Just come on out, check out. We have all kinds of un unique vendors um, vendors that you are unlikely to find at your ordinary festivals. Um, we got food trucks. We got a beer truck. Yes, and we will be serving beer. Uh, we have a um, Star Hill Vineyards and Winery will be there selling bottles of their wine. Um, so, yeah, we got all kinds of food vendors. We got some great food vendors. I I'm impressed by what we got lined up. You guys got to come check it out. Again, May 25th. And that's happening at the Bakersville Community Grove Park in Somerset, Pennsylvania. So, with that being said, immediately following that is our week-long um, campout. It's our group campout. We do limit spots on that for the spaces we have available. And also because we don't believe in taking large crowds out in the woods. Now, in Virginia... I usually do that every May and every fall, but I'm doing the May event, uh, May camp out up here in Pennsylvania. Uh, in Virginia, uh, our fall events happening in October, and usually we do September, but we're moving it over to October, uh, which 
you like to get a little bit more cooler temperatures, but it's going to be nice. It's still usually very nice temperatures in October, especially in Virginia. So we're doing October this year. October 20th through the 26th. Spots are limited. There's registration and a donation fee required for that. There's a reason why we do a donation fee. And uh, part of that is not only to raise funds for future events and equipment, but it also helps eliminate hoaxers that want to join the camp out. Uh, we take our camp outs very seriously because we do a lot of exploring. And we search for Bigfoot evidence. And if you're a non-believer, if you're one of the just fellow campers who are watching this video, it's okay to laugh at this. It's A lot of people laugh at things they don't understand. A lot of people make mockery at things they don't understand. Um, their minds can't comprehend what is a reality. Um, there's a lot of things, if you're told that something doesn't exist, of course you're going to believe it because the authorities tell you it doesn't exist. Just like the mountain lions that are up here. I witnessed mountain lions in Virginia. I know there are sightings up here. And if you're a non-believer in mountain lions because your game wardens or your authorities told you they don't exist, then you're going along with it. Um, you're not doing the research for yourself. And that's the truth. So, there are things that are out in these woods that a lot of people would never expect, you know. And why does the authorities not recognize this? Or not, only, not really recognize, but why do they not admit to it? There's a number of factors. One is the fear factor. If the general public was to come to realize that we do have large humanoid, hairy, bipedal subjects walking around these woods, our state forest, national forest, wouldn't they stop coming into the woods to camp and rec uh, have you know recreation? A lot of people spend money and put money into recreation and outdoor living and enjoyment. And so if everything was to come out into the public, money wouldn't be spent where people come out and enjoy out here. Now, yeah, I'm doing, this is primitive camping, but there's campgrounds that border a lot of these forests. So mountain lions, Bigfoot, you name it, they're not gonna admit to it, even if they know the truth. In Virginia, I can tell you, I've had several game wardens give me almost the same exact storyline. They have a script, and they're told what to tell you. I don't care if you've seen it yourself. They're going to tell you you did not see it. It could be right in front of you, and you could tell them as soon as you see them, I just saw a mountain lion. It was right in front of me. Oh, you got pictures? No, you were caught up in the moment. You don't think about taking pictures. You're, you know, you're, your mind's like wonderstruck. It's like... You go, you know, it's like you mesmerize uh, at the beauty or the excitement or the thrill of what you're viewing. You don't think about pulling your camera out. So, but it is what it is. You can believe or you can disbelieve. Just don't hate those that believe. Me, I'm not a, a believer. I'm a knower. There is a big difference. You can believe or disbelieve all you want. But knowing... Is a whole new ball game. I know people that actually have made mockery of people and made fun of people for believing in, in doing what I do and others. But when they had a sighting of their own, it changed their world. They stopped. They were put in their place. Now, will everybody get put in their place? No. But, you know, it could happen. Yep, just think about it. You can laugh and joke all you want. It's not going to stop us. Now, for those who do believe, and I've been questioned about certain things. I've been questioned about a lot of different things over the years. One of the things that's uh, been asked to me, if I ever... Uh, well, let me put it this way. If Bigfoot ha has... If Bigfoot is ever classified or announced publicly as a known discovered species, would I stop looking for them? No. 
we know mountain gorillas we know all these different species of primates exist our primatologists who are out in the field observing these species at a close proximity in their own environment they witness them all the time but they keep doing it why because sometimes behaviors change activities diets there are things that are known species of primates uh, are observed doing sometimes even with the certain things that it leaves scientists scratching their head and puzzled why they do what they do and here in our own neck of the woods or here in North America we find things that are related to the behaviors and the activities and the findings of our known species of primate so and that's another subject all in itself Bigfoot being a primate is he well that depends on who you ask and how you look at the subject because there's people that want to believe he's an alien fine believe he's an alien I mean you might have witnessed a UFO or seen things I believe there's some strange things up there I've witnessed some strange things I've witnessed strange lights in these very woods right here right up the road but not to get off subject here but I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to stick to where I started my research off of. And I'm going to continue to go along that line. Because there's so much that I have found. That I can easily contribute to what's observed from our known species of primates. You know, a lot of weird, odd findings that we find here in the woods. Are people doing them? Sure, some of them. Do people rock stack, uh, do people start, uh, stack rocks up against trees? Sure, why not? For what reason? I don't know. Does Bigfoot throw rocks? I believe so. I really do because gorillas and chimpanzees throw rocks. Do Does Bigfoot knock on trees? We believe he does. For communication and other purposes. Do gorillas and chimpanzees and other primates do that? Yes. For intimidation, aggression... And maybe communication. Does Bigfoot whoop? Yes, our known species of primates do it. Bigfoot's bipedal. Bigfoot's seen on all fours. Gorillas, chimpanzees, they're known as knuckle walkers. But... They also have been observed walking bipedals, sometimes for a good period of time. So the question is, what is Bigfoot? How do you view Bigfoot? There's a lot of basic things I could go back in and get into a lot of details, which I'm not going to. It's my form of Bigfoot 101. There's other forms of Bigfoot 101. People have written books about it and their own methods and, and their own views on Bigfoot. I have my own. Mine, I like to believe a little bit more grounded, uh, based, you know, because I do a lot of comparisons and research on our known species of primates, along with what we observe and experience out here in nature. Does North America have an undiscovered, unclassified primate? Yep. That's my, that's my honest, God to honest opinion, and I believe that may be the truth. Um, is Bigfoot human? Some say he is. But here's the other thing. People say he's not a primate either. Depends on your view. Scientifically speaking, in, in, in scientific terms, humans are considered primates. So, are you dismissing the whole scientific terminology and the view of when it comes to science and just say he's primate uh, he's a human and not a primate it, it's something to think about it's at least something to consider i'm not forcing no beliefs on you and i don't care what you believe i'm just this is me this is just me in my view does bigfoot have special abilities if he does i haven't experienced it yet but I will tell you this, there's a lot we don't understand, there's a lot we probably will never know, but never underestimate any species.
never underestimate any species especially one that we have no knowledge about or very little about anyway i mean i've witnessed them i've i've seen him i've heard things out here that i believe and i could honestly contribute to bigfoot but do not underestimate him do, I, do not underestimate his strength and as far as his abilities and what they're able to do we don't know but we can make conclusions and we can believe that he's capable of certain things but until we physically with our own eyes experience something i mean how can you make a fact out of something that you believe it makes sense don't it i know i'm rambling but it is the it is what it is so You know what? I need to get me a drink. Grab me a bottle of water. Or matter of fact, I got me some Mountain Dew. I don't drink Mountain Dew all the time, but you know what? For this camping event, I got me some Mountain Dew. It's Diet Mountain Dew. So I do believe I may have some Mountain Dew here. I am enjoying the beautiful sky that I see over here. The woods. Uh, I can't wait to take you exploring with me tomorrow on Saturday. Because, you know, we're still in day one. See some blue sky out here again. But uh, I'll bring you guys back here in a little while. Because I know there's going to be a lot more I could talk into. Very random discussions. Random thoughts that run through my head. Um, there's a lot of stuff I talk, and it, I know I may be hard to follow when it comes to Bigfoot talk because I'm very random. Even when I do presentations and lectures at events, um, I mean, I do use a presentation to keep me more on track, but I am very random even with a presentation because I'll talk from one discussion, one topic, I'll jump to another one, and then I'll bring you back to where I started because there's usually a connection why I'm doing that. There's always a reason. So, but enough of that right now. We'll talk some more. And um, we'll get into some more discussions a little bit later this evening. So, uh, I think I might uh, make me a coffee with my dinner. Or maybe have the coffee after the dinner. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Because I got plenty of coffee. I got Mountain Dew. I got tons of water. So... <laughs> You know, uh, one of the things, I think I have some flavor packs for my water. I only got a few of them, but I do have some. Yep. So, yeah, we'll see you guys shortly. So, I got a nice fire going right now, and I want to show you what I'm going to be preparing here. Would you believe I found these at the Family Dollar? Yeah, I, I was just seeing what they had in their frozen food section. And they got these New York strips. Pleasant View Farms. Quality meats. Yep. So, it's 8 ounce New York strip. I have three of these. I'm actually going to do two of them tonight. Yeah, I'm going all out. I'm going to do two of them. So, yep. Once that fire burns down, I'm just getting them out, getting them ready. I'm going to season them up. And then uh, we'll go from there. Steak, New York strips. It's what's for dinner tonight. Oh my goodness, they smell so good. I got onion powder, garlic powder, and blackening seasoning on them. And they are smelling amazing right now. Let me tell you something. You probably heard me say this twice already. These are New York strips I found at the Family Dollar. I took a chance on them. I just took my first bite. I mean, yes, I have them seasoned up with garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of blackening. And they are amazing. Very tender. And even though this one here looks like it's cooked 
too much. I like my medium rare, which there is the proper amount of pinkness in there. Again, it tastes so good. Even the fat is crispy. I love crispy fat. Not everyone likes the fat. So I'm going to tell you. If you like me, get it crispy. Just like bacon. Everyone loves bacon. It's meat and fat. Everyone eats all of it. And the pasta salad, I made that yesterday. It's actually bacon and ranch flavored pasta salad. Now, I should be eating this up on the table, which will be a lot easier, which I might actually do here. Mmm. Nice and crispy. Oh my goodness. This is good. The only thing the pasta salad does not have, which sometimes I like to put my eggs in it, hard boiled eggs, but it's all right. Tastes real good. The one thing I do have in it is some grated Parmesan cheese I added to it. Mm. I love having steaks when I go camping. Most of the time it's uh, smoked sausages, hot dogs, hamburgers, which I'll do next time perhaps. But uh, I'm gonna jump off here so I can make some room on my table here and enjoy this steak. If you're wondering, it's Mountain Dew. I poured Mountain Dew in an empty water bottle. It's not pee. All right, this is more like it. So I'll be back here in a little while because I have another steak to go through right here, which I'm gonna place that right there put this down here we'll be back <laughs> 